Carol stood quietly, fidgeting and flicking through the information in his hollow pad. He'd been working on Central Core 5 for three standard cycles now, but he had never seen his co-worker standing so far away from him. He would have thought that the glances they sent him were pitying if he hadn't known for a fact that some of them never pitied anyone. His transmitter picked up the soft thrum of his three or four ricketh co-workers and translated it. Worry. Anxiety. Fear. Kirill swiped a claw through the holopad's field, examining his instructions again. Cultural liaison to a merchant crew. It was an astonishing promotion from cargo duty, and definitely not one he'd expected. So why was everyone so on edge? Does anyone want to explain to me? He demanded, staring at the co-workers averting their eyes. Why does everyone act like I've got a scash plague? You... you know how old Gokrell works. Nobody gets promoted until five cycles at least. It's weird, right? One of his co-workers, a slim fray, murmured softly. And they told us to stay no less than three GS units away from you at all times. And you're not to touch anything. Kirill's neck frills rose slightly at that. Why didn't they tell me I'm not to touch anything? We don't know. Maybe to avoid scaring you. Well, it didn't work. I might not have been scared before, but I am now. Is Gakrell coming out here to explain himself? But as Kirill asked that question impatiently, the door swung open and his boss entered, flanked by two Finn reinforcers. Their massive bulk and heavy armor made Kirill take a step back, but he knew he couldn't outrun them, and he wasn't sure he should. Kirill Nakte. Your services are hereby requisitioned by the Department of Interspecies Affairs. Grell cleared their throat and sighed, their voice burbling with slight distress. Someone with relevant training would have been ideal, but this is something of an emergency, so you'll have to do. Kirill's neck frill turned slightly orange around the edges. That was not exactly complimentary. Still, an official requisition. This was serious. What do I need to do? He asked, the spines on his neck frills pulsing a nervous yellow. Follow us. Kukrell stepped back with another burble. I will explain on the way, and don't touch anything. Kirill nodded. So I've been told. He followed his boss and the enforcers into the lift, where it immediately shot down. Kirill paused, confusion appearing in bright teal spots on his frills. Down from the cargo bay was only... Contagion containment? No, oh, Carixis, This will be a fun explanation. Grell's species, the Innis, used scent glands to express emotions. The whole lift smelled of stress. It smelled a bit like Kirak's root, one of Kirill's favourites, but he had learned not to salivate when an Innis smelled like stress. He swallowed hard instead, and focused on listening to his boss's explanation. So, we've got a new species coming in, and they're a wreck to try to deal with. Oxygen breathers, for one, from a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. Kirill's neck frills perked up. His species could use several different gases for respiration, but oxygen was one of them, a trait not often seen in the galaxy at large. Most species used the more commonly available hydrogen, which was why the air of the station was mostly hydrogen in methane, with a few trace gases for other species. So that's it. You need a liaison that can breathe their air. Among other things. They're omnivores, apparently, like you. Another rare trait. Kirill didn't know much about the consumer status of the galaxy at large, but he knew enough to realise that you had to be careful. The carnivores can make a herbivorous species very, very nervous. 
while a herbivore could be seen as weak by a carnivorous one, and subsequently ignored. Kirill could imagine the headache that picking a liaison for an omnivorous species could be. And then there's the gravity. Well, we need someone with an endoskeleton. An exoskeleton or cartilage just won't do. Gagrell sighed, wiping their scent glands, where a bit of condensation was showing just how hard the unfortunate glands were working. Kirill swallowed again, willing himself not to drool at the tasty scent. We almost started a war right off the bat. The first one we sent to greet them had an exoskeleton, and she nearly died. We thought they'd used gravity weapons. Gagrell shivered. No, it's just that high. What's their gravity? Kirill's home planet was considered a weighty one, with about twelve standard units of gravity. Fifteen units, so I'm told. I find it hard to believe myself. Well, no, seeing how short they are, I might believe it, actually. Gagrell burbled again. You know, anyone visiting without an endoskeleton has to take serious precautions visiting your planet. Imagine how much worse it is on their ship. Kirill's neck frills pulsed teal, mixed with the brilliant fuchsia of curiosity. Omnivores, oxygen breathers, and high gravity? Is this a new species? I told you it was a new species. Pay attention! Gagrell snapped, the smell of stress intensifying. Kirill swallowed again. They're in contagion containment per protocol, but from what we can tell, we'll have to pump you full of every conceivable inoculation we've got, and it might not be enough. I'm told they may be placed under official contact-only status, at least until we have something to combat some of these with. I don't need to tell you how important your service will be if that happens. You might be the only contact the whole species gets with the galaxy until that designation is lifted. Take it seriously. Kirill nodded, every frill on his neck turning a bright yellow. This was an awful lot of responsibility to drop on a glorified cargo shuttle. The frills stayed yellow through the entire process of decontamination and inoculation. Kirill, Gagrell towered over him but the scent coming off them now was stress mixed with affectionate worry. That smell effectively dried Kirill's drool right up. Survive. Kirill's frills flared to full bright red alarm pulsing along the spines and around the edges. Survive? What the kicks next, boss? We secured something that works against most of their infectious diseases. They had it in their medicine hold. Something called Vink Zox, I believe. But it's incredibly poisonous, so we can't use it on you unless you're actively dying. So, don't. Kirill's frills slowly turned a deep red-black as he processed that information. The burble from his boss sounded almost desolate as if Gagrell was sending someone they considered a friend out to die. Come to think of it, that might not be far from the truth. Thanks, Gagrell. Good luck with the rest of the cargo jockeys. Gagrell nodded. Their burble sounded slow and dignified. Good luck, Kirill. You are officially liaison to an unknown species. Remember that the Department of Interspecies Affairs will expect daily reports unless you are too ill to write one. Details are on your hollow pad. Kirill nodded and stepped into the next room, accompanied by several medics dressed in high-grade hazmat gear. Kirill wished he got some, but apparently he wasn't allowed any. Some bureaucratic issue or other, he reckoned, as if that should take precedence in a situation like this. Behind a thick wall of glass steel, Several somewhat gangly pink creatures flopped around in various attitudes. One stood at their approach, and the rest followed. Kirill's translator picked up several tones from them, a few sounding like aggression, a few placating. They were wearing translators, but all they seemed to be picking up was jumbled noise. 
He wasn't sure if the translator was fried or not. Well, he would find out soon enough. Atmosphere exchange was unpleasant as ever, and Kirill felt himself topple as his body devoted all its energy to containing the hydrogen-oxygen reaction as best it could. It would generally store extra energy from the reaction, making this a good way to get extra calories if his species needed it, but it was never fun to have tiny controlled explosions going off in your cells. Eventually, Kirill sat up to find pink creatures watching him. The translator attempted to decipher their wording, or at least the emotions behind them, but came out with a garbled jumble of static and random words. As Kirill finally made his way through the decontamination chamber and came face to face with the new species, he noticed one thing first. Their eyes. Those were clearly primate eyes but the glint in them. Kirill's neck frills flared yellow and raised slightly. He remembered that these were omnivorous. Their bodies seemed more suited to plants than meat, but his looked more suited to meat than plants, so he knew there was no indication of their primary preferences. Nervously, Kirill cleared his throat. H Hello, I am Kirill. The pink creatures looked toward one who seemed to be their leader. His language was odd, and Kirill thumped his translator a few times trying to make it work. Damn it all, had they not even bothered to get a lexicon working before coming to get him? He wasn't a linguist. The creature frowned, and Kirill could see him thinking carefully. Finally, his eyes landed on Kirill's hollow pad and lit up. He gestured to it, and Kirill lifted the pad carefully, turning it on. The creature's eyes seemed slightly disappointed at the galactic standard written on the pad, but this did not deter them. They seemed determined to communicate by any means necessary. After some back and forth, the two settled on using pictures projected on the holopad to discuss what was going on. The creature slapped the glass steel wall and made impatient noises. Kirill used a picture of microbes found on the new species skin to explain. The creature sounded unhappy, but yielded. Unfortunately, after that, progress stalled. Kirill found himself muttering in frustration. Damn rats, can't even get a working lexicon going before throwing me in here. What's the matter with this place? Don't even get a hazmat suit. I never should have left right then. Can't believe this. Hey, there we go. Kirill leaped a full unit into the air at the shout. The creature was tapping a translator in his ear. Think they finally got the lexicon working, boys? A roar rose from the creatures in the room, and Kirill's frill pulsed red. A hunting call? Hey now, shut up, you're scaring him. One hollered. The one Kirill had been trying to communicate with sighed and stared around the room. Everyone else quieted down. Howdy, sir, nice to meet you. Name's Jake Stevens. And I'm the captain, and you are... Kirill, I've been a sit signed as liaison, assuming I live, Kirill muttered. The captain's face changed dramatically. With the updated information, Kirill's translator was able to interpret. Alarm. Is it that bad? Kirill sighed. They did what they could, but even whatever you had in the medical bay seemed very toxic. They don't know if my immune system can keep up. That Vink Zox isn't good for us. Another one of the creatures began to make a loud noise, as if he were trying to breathe in and out at the same time. Amusement. Doc, what's the matter? Vang Zosin, the creature who seemed to be the crew's medic, wiped at his eyes. They were leaking some sort of secretion. It's Vang Zosin, and it's meant to be poisonous. Kirill's neck frills flared upward, bright red. You willingly dose yourself with poisons? Beats the alternative, the medic shrugged. We do it carefully and over a period of time. It's designed so that our bodies can just about take it, but the infection can't. What kind of infections do you have that need you to dump poisons into your system? Kirill's red frills turned an even darker shade. The medic raised his eyebrows. Man, you'd hate what we do for cancer. 
cancer? Kirill shook his head. Never mind. I don't need to know right now. I'm supposed to be your cultural liaison, so... First things first. What do you call your species? Slowly, his frills began to settle and turn a curious fuchsia. Ah, uh, we call humans. Kirill hesitated. He wasn't sure the hissing sound was one he could make. He made an attempt. Humans! Everyone in the room began to roar. Kirill stepped back, a hint of red coming back into his frills. Amusement. His frills went from red to an embarrassed purple. What's funny? he asked, bewildered. He could not have known at that point that cumin was a key ingredient in something his hosts consumed regularly, something called taco spice. This liaison work was going to be a long process.